Hello. In this tip, we are going to go ahead and talk about how in SQL Server 2017, you can end up using Query Store to get wait stats all the way down to an execution plan for an interval of time that Query Store is collecting data. Now, if you're new to wait stats or you need help making your SQL Server run faster, go ahead and check the link up above so you can go ahead and get help with a health check or some consulting services. Now back to the demo here, we're going to go ahead and see that we're going to use the Wide World Importers Data Warehouse and we're going to turn Query Store on here. Now note that our interval length that we're setting here is to collect every minute and that's just for this demo. So after one minute, Query Store will sample the data and persist and get that data there to disk. So we're going to go ahead and run this. Now we're going to go ahead and clear everything out of Query Store for our demo here. And now we're going to go ahead and run an explicit transaction. Uh, what this means is we're forcing a transaction here by having a begin transaction. And this transaction will not change data until it gets a commit. Um, or it can go ahead and undo the changes by doing a rollback here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two sessions in a classic blocking scenario here where we're going to go ahead and delete some data from our sales table with an explicit transaction, but we're never going to commit or roll it back. So while this runs real quick, it's going to block anything else from running. So when we go over to session 62 here and we actually go ahead and select this data, this query is just going to run over and over and keep going on and on. It's never going to finish because it's waiting for 55 to either session 55 to either roll back or commit. And because neither of those has happened, this query will always be blocked by session 55. So we're going to go back over here to session 55 and I'm going to go ahead and roll this transaction back. Now what you're going to notice is Instantly, after we roll this back, our other session 62 is going to show us data because it's no longer going to be blocked. So we're going to go ahead and execute this and flip over and you see that we have our data here. Because we're no longer blocked, we're able to run that select statement and get our data. All right, so we have a nice blocking scenario here. Let's go ahead and go back over to 55 here. And now we're going to go ahead and look at Query Store here and see the wait stats data that we can get access to. So first we're just going to explicitly go ahead and push our data, flushing it out to disk here. And now we're going to start digging. And so the very first thing we have to do to go through here is find what is the ID for the query we want, we want to look at wait stats here. So I just have the beginning of our statement here. So we can go ahead and get our query ID. And so here we can see that the query ID here is 2. So if we want to get data about that query, we're going to go ahead and use query ID too. So our next step, because wait stats are going to be persisted by plan ID, we have to use the query to get the plan or plans that were used for it. So here we're going to go ahead and run this DMV query store plan here so we can actually get the plan ID. And in this case, we're going to actually see our plan ID is also two. So now, because we know our execution plan ID, this is where things are going to get really fun. Because now we can actually go ahead and use this new DMV called SysQueryStoreWaitStats. And we're actually going to get all the wait stats that occurred for our plan ID for the query. We want to know what the wait stats were and why it was slow. Pretty cool stuff. So we're going to go ahead and run this here. And note, before we even run this, I can filter this even deeper. We could go all the way down to the interval ID of the interval of the times that we were sampling by. But for the demo here, we're just going to get all of the wait stats here for our query based on the execution plan here. So we're going to go ahead and run this. And this shouldn't shock or surprise you. When we look at our wait stats, we had a blocking demo. We can see that we had locking. This makes perfect sense. So what you can see here is for our query that we ran based on the plan ID, we were able to go ahead and get all those wait stats for that query that ran. This is really cool stuff. Also, if you want to dig a little deeper, you can go ahead and just do select star from the sysquery store wait stats DMV. And you can easily see here all the data that you can go after here. So 
For example, we have our execution plan ID. Remember, if we want a query, we have to find a plan or plans that exist for that query ID or query hash and go ahead and filter by them. If we also want to look at certain time intervals, we can get the ID of those time intervals too and filter off that as well. Next, we'll have our category and the names for them. And then here you can see the total query wait time, average query time, last query wait time. In this case, we only ran it once. So all these numbers would be the same. But as statements run more and more, these aggregate data points here can be very helpful for you. So I hope you enjoyed this tip going over how you can see wait stats by an execution plan in Query Store SQL Server 2017. I hope you enjoyed this tip. Also, go ahead and make sure you can subscribe. Go ahead and click in at the link below so you can subscribe to get more SQL Server tips. Thank you.